It's Sunday and I'm heading to East Moriches Bay Beach because I'm packing heat. Well, not quite yet. Not until master spear fisherman Matt Sasso teaches me a thing or two. Hey, hey. Matt? Yeah, hi Ramona, how are you? Hey, good, nice to meet you finally. This is Rob. Rob? It's me. Yeah, you too. You excited to do some spear fishing? I'm super excited. Okay, let's show you what we're gonna get into down here. Awesome, thank you. one get into the sport of yeah, That's fishing. a really good question. I spent 20 years making mistakes, getting caught in fish line, uh, cutting myself, uh, getting bitten by fish, losing spear guns, um, you know, almost getting hit by boats. Matt is the owner of Spearfishing Extreme, and he's brought along a team of people to teach me how to catch and cook fish. I'm impressed, Matt. You brought out the whole posse today to, yeah. to spend the day on the beach spearfishing, and uh, let's hope I catch a fish. My first fish was taken on a uh, broom's handle with a barbecue fork tied to it in a five-foot tidal pool. I think we can get something for you today. You're kidding, right? No? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Most of the fish that you're going to shoot in a shoreline ecosystem like this are going to be five feet away. They're going to be within 20 feet of the surface. OK, let's talk about the humanity of, of shooting fish. I mean, is it sport? Or is it? It's a little bit of both. So being a, uh, you know, kind of born and bred hunter-gatherer, going out, getting it, and serving it at the dinner table is a, you know, very powerful feeling. One of the sayings that we have is never take any more than your largest pot can handle. Plus, we're going to eat the fish that we, we catch are. today. Today, we're going to catch fish with a gun. Matt's about to give me a 101 in spear fishing artillery. And I love to start with this one. This is called the pole spear. Very, very simple. It's a tapered spear, um, which allows you to grab it. You put the uh, band on your hand. Pull it up. You can hold it very easily. You do get a slingshot. I always you thought do. you just like threw it. No, 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 no. That's no. for the Aborigines. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's from your part of the world. Here's another gun. This is uh, one of the smaller guns, and actually on Long Island, because we have so many different types of ecosystems here with different waterways, we have different visibility. On the North Shore, you tend to have very, very short distances of visibility, three to five feet. Mm -hmm. And a long gun won't really do it. So we use shorter guns like this one, which is a 24 inch gun. This can uh, take big, big stripers, it takes fluke, it takes blackfish, and all the different indigenous species that we have here. So how close do I have to get to a fish before I shoot it? Most of your fish here are going to be shot within three feet. <gasps> right? I get that close? Yeah. So I can't right? really miss, right? You really can't. <laughs> so what fish are we looking at shooting today? That's a great question. We brought some things along to help oh, you. Oh, cool. Hmm. Does this mean there's a quiz later? So the fluke here is actually uh, called a summer flounder. We call it fluke is the local name for it. They call it sole. They call it uh, halibut. And how big can... Oh, uh, these can get really big. The largest one I've ever shot was uh, 14 pounds, which it couldn't fit in a 55-gallon cooler. Right, bigger than a doormat, and we actually call the big ones doormats. Nice, because um, they're flat and they like lay in the mud on yeah. the bottom. Right? See, I know my fish. The other one, which we're probably going to get, is called the ocean trigger fish. These are the most delicious fish in the ocean. We're very careful with these fish. These are the most vindictive fish in the whole feisty. ocean. Yeah, feisty. They have a nasty, sharp spine over here on the top, so we never put our hand on the top of them. When we grab them, we just grab them from the bottom, and we never get anything in front of their mouth. And the uh, the last fish that we want to show you, this is the big kahuna. This is the big game fish bass. here inshore on Long Island is the striped bass. These can get up to uh, 50, 60 pounds. These need to be 28 inches or, or larger. 28. 28 inches. That's a pretty big fish. Or larger. Um, it's going to look aggressive. It's going to look filled out. It's not going to look kind of thin and lean. So if it scares me when I look at it, it's probably mature enough to shoot. That's your fish. The, the biggest <laughs> thing to realize is it's just a fish. So hang on, I'm watching out for biting fish, yeah. snapping crabs, spear guns, yeah. riptide cones, yeah. Boats. Yeah. Um, it's actually very easy. Day at the right. beach. Hey, if I catch a fish, it's a good day. We got back up. So we're team fishing today? <laughs> so I can today? eat your yeah, fish yeah. if I don't you catch any? You can eat our fish All and right. we can drink your beer. Perfect. Now that's a deal. Today the water temperature is about 65 degrees, but I'm still going to need a wetsuit because it gets cold at depth and I'll definitely need protection against anything sharp. When you don't want your goggles to fog up, just put a little spit in there. Right as rain. Not nervous to get in the water, but it's freaking hot out here, so I'm actually really keen to get in the water. Snorkeling, piece of cake. Put a gun in my hand, that's when I'm gonna get nervous. Either it's the exotic locale or the weapon by my side, but suddenly I feel like a Bond girl. I'm going for the crab. Oh, I think I'm losing the crab. I'm only diving down about 15 feet, but what a different world it is down here. It's harder than I thought to fire this gun, but after a few tries, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Well, we got some fish. Now it's time to enjoy the fruit of our labor. There you go. I got two flukes. All right. 
take a fillet up to this side, fillet up to this side, and flip it over to the white side. Fillet, fillet. Matt's invited some of the spear fishermen and their families to host a beach party. Tom O'Dwyer is a spear fisherman and an expert at the grill. All right, so we stripped up some striped bass in a nice little, uh, you know, three inch by half inch strips that we're going to do batter and some coconut to put in the deep fryer. And you just have a deep fryer in the back of your car yeah. for occasions like this? Yeah, you know. <laughs> we're going to marinate our bass in a little olive oil and garlic. We're going to grill it skin down. When it's about done, I'm going to glaze it with a nice horseradish honey mustard. It's going to be awesome. We've got some uh, fluke and some bass belly in here. And we use sesame seeds, and we call it dirty fingers because you're just gonna drop your fingers in, dip it in the sauce, which is a ginger, lime, and soy sauce with some wasabi, hit it into the uh, sesame seeds. Oh, that's the stuff. This is the epitome of seafood straight from the ocean onto the table. I like to call it a uh, bait to plate. Bait to you know? plate. I like it. I'm going to use that. There's nothing better. It's a huge crowd pleaser. Great way to introduce somebody to fish. Dude, this is a great way to introduce people to spear fishing. Yeah, exactly. Catch a few, cook a few. Starting oh. to crisp up golden brown. Yum. This looks amazing. So what's this concoction called again? I call it coconut striped bass. Coconut striped bass. Simple, you know. Is it ready to eat? It's ready to eat. I'm going to do it. It's a little it. hot. Guys, you want to come taste this? Yeah, it looks okay, really good. Try. Well, cheers, guys. Thanks for taking me spearfishing. All right, yeah, cheers. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Tom. Everybody. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> Is that weird to cheers a piece of bass? Cooking in the hand. Mm. Thanks, guys. This is the perfect cap on a weekend. The Hamptons are just the ideal playground. What's better than good food, wonderful people, and three days packed with excitement and adventure? To find out where you can experience these adventures and see more of mine, go to plumtv.com.